Yes, you busy idiots. You're all busy idiots. I'm a busy idiot. I was a busy idiot. I'm still a, I'm still a bit of a busy idiot. Um, we're going to talk about some epic time management today. Because this is a killer quote, okay? Perfection is not when there is no more to add, but when there is no more to take away, okay? Now, I used to be the busiest idiot in the world, okay? I completely rated everything that I did on amount of hours worked and couldn't wait to tell anyone who would listen how many hours I worked, how hard I worked, how much I did the daily grind. I used to like promote it. Like, yeah, I've got massive balls because I get up at 4.30 in the a.m. in the morning. Probably not necessary. Um, or I work, I work from 4.30 a.m. in the morning till 11 p.m. at night. Whew. Good luck with that one, brother, because you're going to last about a week, okay? And unfortunately, it is pushed on you guys by some entrepreneur mindset coaching type people this, you know, the, the 5am club and the this club and the that club and you need to do this and yeah, it is true sometimes if you're not where you are, you do need to work harder, but can we work harder in a more efficient way? Can we work harder versus less time, okay? When I say to you, Kate, because you're the last name at the bottom, good morning, and this is not you, but a client Let's call the client Jennifer. Morning, Darren. Say good morning. Let's know where you're from. If you're new and you're tuning in, you have to say good morning and let's know where you are from. Please, Joanne Paramore, Apple Yard. We want to know. We're building a little family here and everyone's getting to know each other. Luke Green, uh, Fran Wright. Make sure we say hello. Fran has. Um, so we have this, this um, almost award that we give ourselves of, of how many hours we've worked. And... That's what we that's what we rate ourselves on. And I think where it comes from, Hannah, say good morning, let us know where you're from. I would say to a client, Hannah, Creasy, if you were a client of mine, you're not. But if you were not progressing in the results that you wanted with your fitness or nutrition or business, I would very often say it's because you need to work harder. You're either not training hard enough or you're not tracking your food carefully enough and you're not making yourself accountable, or you haven't done it for long enough. Now, that leads us into the thought process, well, I just need to work harder. Well, if I work harder, and I work longer, then everything will just get better. No, it won't, you'll just get burned out, and you'll become overwhelmed, and you'll become stressed, and then you'll give up, okay? Working harder doesn't necessarily mean working longer, okay? That's not what productivity is. I now rate my productivity, on being able to do the maximum amount of tasks possible in the smallest amount of time, okay? Because way too many people, some of the inquiries that might, that, and do you know what? And this isn't a sexist thing at all. Guys, it's you. I very, very, very rarely get this from ladies. I had it from one woman last week and she just, it just drove me mad and I ghosted her and I just said, I'm not coaching you because you're not ready. Um, Guys, we wear hero medals for the amount of hours worked, okay? And it took me a long, long time to understand this. I rated myself on the amount of hours that I worked per day. And that is a dark, dark, dark place to be, okay? Now, being busy is also, which is why I called it busy idiots, being busy is also a guise, isn't it, for avoiding the most important things. And this is what I experience most with inquiries, okay? This this guy, who I've been using an example, let's call him Matt. Literally, in his head, he works so hard, He his hours are so long, that he, this was his words, not mine, he doesn't have any time to plan food, prep food, or do any exercise at all, seven days a week, because of the amount of hours that he works, okay? Well, 
that is a horrific place to be. One, it's not true, and I don't believe it for a second. Um, it's an avoidance tactic, okay? He's, he was a lorry driver. He's exceptionally overweight. He knows he needs to make change. And deep down, he knows he doesn't need to work those that amount of hours. He knows he has weekends. He knows he can schedule better. There is not one... I don't give a flying monkey's peanut. There you go. It's my effort at not swearing. I'm killing it still. Not one swear word will be dropped. But I don't give a flying monkey's peanut. What he says. His boss is not making him work 18 hours a day, seven days a week. He's choosing to do that. And many of you are choosing to do that because it's an avoidance te technique. There's something important you need to do. It might be the fact, Sheila, good morning. Say hello, let's know you've won. Might be the fact that you're not happy with your wife. And it's a really difficult, awkward situation that needs addressing. So what do we do? Well, being busy is a great guise, isn't it, for avoiding that conversation. I'll just keep grafting. I'll keep, just keep telling everyone how I work 18 hours a day because I'm doing it for the kids. Okay? Maybe assess this. How good a father are you being to your kids if you're working 18 hours a day, seven days a week? They probably don't even know your name. Okay? So flip it. Flip the perception. And I'm sorry if that triggers anyone. Uh, and I do get it because I used to do it myself. But <laughs> it's not the way forward. 100% guarantee you, okay? So we are all searching, aren't we, for that? It took me ages to understand it. But when we are constantly talking about being busy, um, we are creating a guise for avoiding important and difficult decisions or things that we need to do. Morning, Carlton. Cool name. Let us know where you're from. Um, Unless that's Carl, my son. <laughs> if it is, good morning, Carl. Um, the options for creating busyness are, are limitless, aren't they? Absolutely limitless. Work, kids, tidy the house, reorganise the cupboard, organise clothes into colour order, um, travel, social media. They're, they're just endless and we can endlessly justify not doing something because we're busy. And it's always something that's important because if it wasn't, then you wouldn't feel the need to even justify it in the first place. Now, I'll give you a classic example. Um, and I even ended up um, sending photos to, to Liam, who's, um, who I produce music with, and uh, Nick, who I was doing the radio show for. So at some point last year, I had to have a radio mix completed. I think it was by 6 p.m. on a Saturday. So at 9 a.m. on a Saturday, as you can see, there's a fair few wires and equipment and stuff. Numbnuts here decides he's not happy with the sound in the room. And it must be some form of wiring issue somewhere, which I, which it wasn't. Let's reorganise the entire studio. Eight hours before you've got to complete a two hour mix that has to be finished today because it's final, even though you've not even fully prepared the music for it. That's what I did. And that is a... But I was running around, I've got to get this done, I've got to get this done, I've got to get this, ragging wires out, reorganising them. But I still found time to send a photo to Nick and Liam saying, oh my God, I can't believe I've done this. I've got this mix to be in at six o'clock, but it wasn't sounding right. So, and I've literally ragged everything out of the studio, all the wires out, everything. Absolute five hour mission to put it all back together. Get it all making sense again. Did it sound better? Yeah, it did. Did I need to do it? Was it urgent? No. So I wasted a whole day, okay? And when you look at examples like that, it's not difficult to see why we're so busy. It's down to the decisions that we are making and the lack of scheduling, okay? Now, hands up, drop a comment, drop a yes. Anyone that doesn't do it, stop lurking. Anyone who drops a no, I'd be really intrigued to know why. Who wants to learn how to accomplish more in every single day by doing less.
Come on, guys. I want hands up. I want likes. Who wants to accomplish more in every single day by doing less? I'll start with a giant mahusive yes from me. I don't know if I can comment on my own videos. Yes. There we go. Talking to myself. Yes, I 100% want to. We all do, don't we? We all want to accomplish more in each day by doing less. Well, welcome to the weird and wonderful world of elimination, which you may not have considered, okay? Now, the clients, the clients that are watching will know. Uh, if you're not a client, you won't know, but we did some, did a pretty epic coaching yesterday on understanding dreams and what type of dreams it is we want to achieve. Um, mainly that we're going to write them down and we've got three dreams. We've got material dreams, the Gucci handbag. We've got um, doing dreams. Um, I want to, I want to, um, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Doing is I want to, I want to race a motor car or I want, it's the non, the non-material things. Okay. Um, and going, going places. So I want to go and do my dream holiday somewhere. So we've got them broken down into three separate things. Generally, okay, material and non-material. Now, once we have defined what these things are that we want, we not only need to look at it from an earning perspective, we need to look at it from a, a goal setting and scheduling and time period. Because once we've defined what we want, we need to free up the time in order to do it. Yeah, Stacey, go for it. Go for it. Post it on here if you want. Um, in fact, you can post it in the group and I'll do it in the Q&A afterwards. Um, rather than being so busy, let's start to think about being productive, okay? And I'll tell you another massive reason why people fall down on this is most of you will be looking at it thinking this is only for self-employed people though. This is only for entrepreneurs. How on earth can I be less busy and be more productive and eliminate things when I've got a job and I have to work nine till five, okay? How could this possibly work? And this is killer. So if you're in a job and you want more time and you want more productivity and you want more free time to go and achieve your goals, you want to become more valuable and you want to earn more money, even though you're in a job and you think you can't, I suggest you massively listen up right now and grab a pen. So how do we, one, increase your value, two, lawfully request a pay rise, three, make it impossible for that company to lose you. And four, request less working hours so you can spend more time fulfilling your dreams, okay? It all comes down to giving more and being more productive, okay? Anyone can run around the office with a phone pinned to their ear with loads of papers, playing Mother Teresa, showing the whole company how busy she is. I've had employees like this, whilst actually doing sweet FA. You've all, anyone who's worked in an office, you will have all seen them. The busy body that just runs around all day, sorting everyone's problems out. Um, always the first to make a cup of tea, which is appreciated in the morning, no doubt. Um, but actually achieves very little, okay? She's the one organising the emails. She's the one putting everything into folders. She's the one organising that cupboard over there. You know, she's the one reorganising the studio. Um, and just achieving nothing because the busy time is spent on low value tasks. Now, this is what I ask you and challenge you to do, okay? Start to show your boss how you can generate more income. Start to show your boss how you can make his or her life easier. Start to be more productive in terms of your hours. Now, what your worry will be here is if, it, if you can get that productive, that in your 40 hours in the office, you start to complete all your jobs in 20 hours, well, you're just going to get another 20 hours work, aren't you? For no extra money. That's epic. That's the most epic position you can be in as an employee. Because then all of a sudden, your boss is going to think, well, Jesus, I don't actually need Janet anymore. 
because Jane is doing her jobs and Janet's jobs in the same amount of time, okay? And she's not bothering me because she just gets on it and she's productive and she's focused and she's not messing around on her phone and she's not constantly making cups of tea and coffee and running around like Mother Teresa, okay? Then you become invaluable. Now there's two angles to this. One is, and ultimately a lot of people have faced this during um, recent times, which I'm really sad for them for, but when hook comes to crunch, and that's not even the right phrase, but we'll roll with it, push comes to shove, and someone has to leave the company, who do you think is gonna go first? The person doing 80 hours work in 20 and then being given more and still doing it? Or the person who messes around stretching 20 hours jobs out into 40, because they're stuck in the nine till five and they don't care, okay? Take that home, whether it hurts you or not, and implement it because this is how you increase your value, this is how you increase your pay, and this is in how you increase your time off in a job, okay? Because when you become invaluable, you can demand anything you want, okay? And it is impossible for them to lose you and they will be petrified to get rid of you. And you will be able to start to say things like, hey boss, I just want to give you a debrief of what I did last week. Um, that's way more than what was expected of me. And when you've done that consistently over time, you know, I always remember a very, very stark conversation when it was an epiphany moment for me, when um, I was a kind of boss in between a boss and employees. And employees used to come to me and say, Lee, I think I used to deserve a pay rise. And the first thing that my big boss used to say was, is he doing more than when I employed him? And very often the answer was no. So what was the answer to the pay rise? No. If the person was doing more, it was considered and it could be a yes because that person was becoming more valuable. They were, it might not necessarily be generating more income, but they might have been making other people's jobs easier, helping other people to be more productive, making sure things were done in terms of urgency, creating less stress in the office. And your goal as an employee should be to become that valuable that the company cannot run without you. And they are petrified that if you ever left and went to a competitor, because then you are in a position to request a pay rise and you're also in a position to request working less hours, many of them remotely. So if you are employed, you can do it. You just need to be shrewd about it. And if you want more, you want more pay, you want more time off, you need to give more, okay? It won't just happen. The quickest way to get what you want is to give more, hand on heart. Rudolph, what an absolutely epic name. Um, say good morning, tell us where you're from, say hello. Same with Linda Brown, same with Danielle Hartley, same with Claire Simmons, same with Mel Mackerel. Some classic names on this morning, I love it. Okay, so we'll continue. Okay. Entrepreneurs, how is it different to an entrepreneur, to an employee? Because employees will definitely think that self-employed people, it's easy for them. It's not, okay? Because when you're in charge of your own hours, you become your own worst enemy. And this is without a shadow of a doubt what I did in the early parts of being self-employed. Because when you, morning Louise, say hello, let's know where you're from. When you become the direct financial beneficiary of the hours worked, that's when the hours become crazy. I've hand on heart done 100 hour weeks. Um, I've done, when I was personal training, I once did four 16 hour, or 16 hour sessions back to back in days before having a complete meltdown and getting ill, okay? That's the risk you run and that's what you have to start to learn to understand, okay? What we need to focus on is we need to be increasing income whilst decreasing hours worked, okay? What was the answer to that semi-private? Group four guys together, charge them £10 less each, they get more sessions, I get more money, and I work four times less hours, okay? 
that's the way you have to think of it. So start to think about, you, we've, you've got to drop this, he who works longest is the best hour, is the best person, because they're not. It just leads to burnout, okay? And then burnout leads to suppression. Suppression leads to sedation, drinking, staying away from home, it's just not good at all. Morning, Louise and Scott. So the trick is, and that's what we're gonna come on to tomorrow, is how do we increase revenue whilst decreasing hours worked? I've kind of gone through it there, um, more so for employees, but we'll go through it more from an entrepreneurial um, aspect tomorrow. Um, to give you a little ink in, we're gonna be working on being efficient versus being effective, which is two very different things that you might have um, might have not considered. Um, the first two things we'll be looking at is why doing something important well doesn't make it important and why requiring a lot of time to do a job doesn't make it important either. How many times have you said, I'm gonna get this job done first because it's gonna take the longest? Was it the most important? Very rarely, okay? Um, what you do is more important than how you do it. And again, a classic example, which I'm gonna start with tomorrow, which will refer in terms of um, management, will be looking at one-to-one -one selling versus one-to-many, okay? A one-to-one -one person, Tony Robbins could be incredible at sales, okay? If he spends all his days on one-hour sales calls, one-to-one, -one, is he gonna be successful or is he gonna burn out? He's gonna burn out and he's gonna hit a limit where he can't scale. What about if he spends his days on one-to-many webinars, pitching to 1,000 people at once? Effective or efficient? We're gonna discuss the difference, okay? So, yeah, it's very similar to my YouTube video as well. If you, I've put the YouTube video in the link. Um, there is a YouTube video on there called What Gets Measured Gets Ma Managed, okay? Um, which is really helpful for time management, but we're gonna come on to all more of that tomorrow. So Tyler, thanks for listening. Thanks for tying in. Louise, Scott, Tyler, I'd love to know where you're from. Drop a comment. So yeah, effective time management. Tomorrow, we will be developing this further into how we can start to implement all of this into areas of our life, um, whether you are employed or self-employed, and look at how we can start to work towards achieving the ultimate goal, which whether it's fitness, food, mindset, family, focus, finance, earnings, being a parent, whatever it is, we are gonna start working towards the ultimate goal of being able to accomplish more by doing less, okay? And we're all gonna stop being busy idiots. I'll see you in the morning at eight o'clock. Um, all the old videos almost now are on YouTube. The link in there is about 50, I think. So you can watch them whenever you want uh, and also save them and go back to the ones that you enjoy. So there's over 50 free mindset videos on there now. Um, enjoy guys, have an awesome day. I love you all and I hope to see you soon and I hope to see you tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Be there.